So what did dinosaurs sound like? I bet you think you know. I bet you do. There's probably two different answers I'm gonna get on this video. One involves this sound. And the other answer is something more along the lines of this. But the truth, I must admit, and this may shock you, is neither of those answers are right, and neither of them are really wrong. I bet I confuse a lot of you, but just hear me out, and I think by the end of this you'll understand where I'm coming from. Because a lot of people, well, some people of course go with the classic RAR, which generally comes from our own imaginations. We see these big animals, particularly something like a Tyrannosaurus, and think that thing has a horrific cry of doom and destruction. Which is totally understandable, but there's no scientific basis for this. The other side of the equation has kind of fell prey to viral media and misinformation. Because I'm sure some of you are well aware of videos like this and this, which have garnered millions of views. And there are a whole bunch of other examples I can find on TikTok and the like, of these sorts of sounds being shared claiming to be what dinosaurs actually sounded like. Here's the problem with this. None of that is based in science. These sounds are purely theoretical and based on literally nothing when it comes to proper science. Research has gone into figuring out what dinosaurs could have sounded like, but for the most part, we don't have a concrete answer for almost any of them. I say almost, because there is an exception, but I will get to that in a bit. Some of the supposition comes from comparisons to modern animals, like the cassowary, which of course is very dinosaur-like, especially given it technically is one, and emits a series of deep bellows and growls. So one could argue that prehistoric theropods especially would have made similar sounds, but dinosaurs varied wildly in terms of their structure. There were tons of different species over millions of years, and they all probably sounded completely different from each other. Sauropods, for example, well, consider their long necks. That distance that air needed to travel to get from their lungs to their mouth would have altered the sounds they could make. The actual science that has gone into figuring out how certain dinosaur species would have sounded is based mostly on modern animal comparisons, looking at their closest relatives and just kind of guessing. For example, a lot of research has gone into looking into closed mouth vocalization, where a sound is made by inflating the throat, rather than passing air through the syrinx. This is how crocodiles make sound, in fact. And most paleontologists do resist the big, raw, scary thing that Jurassic Park has going on, which is completely understandable. But the truth is, in terms of exactly how they sounded, we just don't know. Part of the problem is that we don't actually have any fossil evidence regarding, well, any vocalizing organs for the most part. In many species cases, we just straight up don't know if they had sound producing organs at all. Some even speculate that the animals may have been mute, which I personally resist because, no, I'm pretty sure they could make some kind of noise. Pretty much any complex organism on our planet today can do that, as well as their descendants. I'm sure they had a way of doing it, but the point is that research and theories are all over the place, and those viral videos are based on nothing except conjecture. Literally, you could say that that's right just as much as you could say that Jurassic Park is right, because until we find evidence of a lack of a sound-producing organ, or that there is one, we just really don't know. However, there is at least one kind of dinosaur where we could say we actually do know what they probably sounded like. Parasolophus tubicin to be more specific with the species, but it's believed this would apply to pretty much every hadrosaur to a significant extent, because the crest that is most commonly associated with them is a vocalizing, well, I'm not sure if you would properly call it an organ, but a structure. The crest was believed to partially be for display, but inside of it there are three pairs of hollow tubes running from the nose to the top of the crest. Two of them performed a U-bend to wind back down towards the base of the skull, to the animal's airways. The other pair would widen to form a large chamber near the top of the crest. In this way, the crest became what is basically a 2.9 meter long resonating chamber, which is exactly what paleontologists were looking for when it came to determining how these animals sounded. Back in 1995, the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science unearthed a nearly complete skull. They were able to use a CT scanner to take 350 images of the crest. They were able to then reconstruct the organ, 
and simulate how it would behave if air was blown through it. As a result, we kind of know how these animals sounded, and it's believed that other hadrosaurs with differently shaped crests may have had a similar mechanic. They were partially for display, but also to serve as a resonating chamber, meaning these animals' calls would all be unique between the different species. So this is pretty much the one exception when it comes to dinosaurs and sound. We can say, in this instance, yep, we know what this animal sounds like. Sounds like this. In terms of the rest of them, eh, it's hard to say. So ultimately, in the end, what can we take from all this? Well, simply, research is ongoing in terms of how these animals might have sounded, and we may never know for sure, besides the exception we've already discussed. But I will say this, the T-Rex probably didn't roar as portrayed in the Jurassic Park film. They also probably didn't sound like any of the viral videos you've seen either. They have exactly the same amount of basis, none. And until we get scientific proof otherwise, I'm just gonna go with the option I think is more entertaining. And with that, a special thank you goes to my Apex Predators, Dr. Racer78, Metal for Life Guy, and Arthur Roy. Till next time, this is Darkness, individual Avon, farewell.